Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds, and today we'll be covering topic 5.9, which is mining. So we'll be discussing different types of mining, we'll be discussing what resources are being extracted during mining, and we'll be discussing the environmental and economic impacts of mining. Our objective for the day is to be able to describe the different types of mining, so we'll compare different types of surface mining and different types of subsurface mining. We'll also be discussing that the ores that are mined have economic value, and we'll be talking about why we mine them. We'll also be discussing the ecological and economic impacts of that mining. The skill that we're going to practice at the end of today's video is proposing a solution to an environmental problem. So before we get into different types of mining, we have to cover some mining basics. So first of all, typically mining is done for a resource, which is oftentimes referred to as ore. An ore is just a commercially valuable deposit of a specific mineral. Oftentimes they're metals that will be used as raw materials. So metals are elements that have valuable heat conducting and electricity conducting properties, but they're also really valuable for building materials. And so we can see here a rock that has an iron ore deposit. Iron is a really valuable ore because within that iron ore, there's iron, that iron can be extracted and it's actually used to make steel, which is an incredibly valuable building material. We have this term here, reserve. Reserve refers to the known amount of a material that's left in the ground, oftentimes an ore or something like coal or oil, and we typically measure in years. So we can take a look at this chart here and see that we have globally about 120 years of iron left in the ground and only about 40 years of iron ore remaining in the United States. So that means in 40 years, if we continue mining iron out of the ground at the rate we're doing in the US, we'll run out. So it's really important to note that for all of these metals, we have finite amounts, meaning that they are non-renewable and they will run out at some point. Um, next, we'll talk about something called overburden. Overburden is just the soil, vegetation, and rocks that are removed to get at a ore deposit that's near the surface. And so they're going to be dug out of the way. Oftentimes, they're piled around the area. So we can see a picture here of big dump trucks that will carry away these rocks and vegetation and the soil, and they'll just kind of make piles of it nearby. And finally, we have tailings and slag. So tailings are basically non-valuable rock components that are separated out from the metal that's being mined or the resource being mined. And then slag is kind of this liquid mixture here of waste products, often chemicals that are used to separate the valuable parts of the ore. And so they're stored typically in pools right on the mining site. Now that's a problem because they may overflow and they may contaminate nearby groundwater. Now we'll talk about different types of surface mining. So first, just a reminder that when we're surface mining, we have to remove overburden that covers up the ore deposit. That's typically gonna be stored in big piles right next to the mining site. So this diagram here is gonna demonstrate some different types. We have open pit mining, which is just digging, digging a big open pit into the ground and then piling the overburden on the side while you go deeper and deeper. Placer mining is kind of unique. It's typically done on a smaller scale. Uh, it's what was done in the California gold rush. It involves using kind of like a sieve and just shaking out sediments so that valuable materials like gold can be recovered. Then you have strip mining, which is kind of peeling back or digging back overburdened layers in strips along the earth. And then finally, we have the most destructive kind of surface mining, which is mountaintop removal. Typically uses dynamite or explosives to blow the top of the mountain off. And the problem is that's gonna be really damaging to nearby landscapes. So we're gonna destroy a lot of trees in the process. We're gonna remove vegetation. So animal homes are gonna be lost it's going to lead to a lot of erosion because there are no more root structures in place to hold that soil in place. Uh, that topsoil is habitat for organisms, but so are those plants that were destroyed. So we have habitat loss. We have increased stream turbidity because all of those sediments that used to be held in place are being eroded and washed down the mountain now. And then finally, we're gonna have increased particulate matter in the air. So there's gonna be a lot of dust in the air from these mountaintop explosions. So this is the worst type of surface mining from an environmental standpoint, but all of these environmental consequences are typically gonna be found with surface mining. Now, the reason that we eventually go deeper into the earth for subsurface mining is when the ore deposit is too deep in the earth. And so as we start to exhaust our surface ore deposits, we're gonna to have to go deeper into the earth. We're also typically gonna go deeper in the earth to mine coal. And we'll talk specifically about how coal is mined in subsurface mining. So it's important to point out that subsurface mining is quite a bit more expensive. This is because workers have to be paid more for health insurance, um, but also the fact that they may have to pay more to the families of the workers from accidents that occur. So there's gonna be a lot of insurance costs associated with subsurface mining. 
Why is it dangerous? Well, there are a ton of risks. Uh, it can be poorly ventilated. So toxic gases like methane could build up. Uh, there could be mine collapse. So the shaft itself, we can see here in this diagram, may collapse and trap miners. There's things like asbestos that can lead to lung cancer. There can be fires or explosions in the mine. And so let's take a little bit deeper look at mine anatomy so we can understand how this works. So first you're gonna see here this vertical shaft, we call it the miner's elevator, and that's gonna carry the miners down vertically, straight down into the ground, and then they're gonna spread out horizontally along these different areas here to do the mining. So we'll also be transporting the coal up this coal elevator, and this is typically how coal is mined. Again, subsurface mining, digging deep into the earth. The problem is that as those surface ore deposits are exhausted, we're just gonna have to go deeper and deeper with our subsurface mining. So it's increasingly used when the ore resource has to be accessed deep within the earth. Now we'll look at a couple more environmental impacts of mining. And the first one here is acid mine drainage. So after a mine is abandoned and it has this open shaft left in the ground, rainwater is gonna leak into the abandoned mine and it's gonna mix with a naturally occurring element in the rock that's been exposed to the mining and that's called pyrite. When that water mixes with pyrite, it forms sulfuric acid. Now the problem with this is that the rainwater washes this sulfuric acid out into nearby rivers and streams, potentially even into the groundwater. That's going to lower the pH, it's gonna make the water more acidic, and that makes toxic metals like mercury, lead, aluminum, more soluble or more easily dissolved into the water. And that's where we can get this dead aquatic life, we can kill fish, or other organisms that can't tolerate that low pH or those toxic metals that become more soluble. Another issue is methane release. So because coal deposits have methane surrounding them, as we're mining coal, we have to vent the methane out of the mine so that it doesn't build up and kill the workers or lead to an explosion. The problem though is that methane is a really potent greenhouse gas and so it's gonna to contribute to climate change. And then finally, we have a lot of particulate matter released. Coal produces a lot of soot and other small particles that get into the air. These can damage people's lungs. So especially mine workers are gonna be really prone to lung cancer or other respiratory issues due to all this particulate matter. And then just a reminder, we've already discussed these, but there's a lot of topsoil erosion that occurs with mining. We're gonna have habitat loss if it's surface mining. And then also we're gonna increase stream turbidity nearby because all of these sediments and soil particles that are disturbed by the mining are gonna flow into these rivers and streams. So here we have a bit of a solution to all of these problems with mining. We have mine reclamation. So once a mine is no longer in use, mine reclamation is the process of uh, trying to restore it to its original state. So step one is to fill the hole in. So you have to put the rock and soil back in place. And then step two is to kind of restore the contours of the land. So you wanna leave the land roughly in the same shape and elevation and slope that it was before. And then the next step is to return the topsoil, but it's really important that harmful chemicals are removed from it. So you wanna to try to remove the acids from the topsoil, remove any leftover tailings or metals that may be left in the soil. And then finally, you wanna replant the area with native vegetation. This is very important. One, the roots of native plants will stabilize the soil, prevent it from eroding, but two, replanting the area with native vegetation ensures that native animal species can return and we can try to restore the conditions of the community as close to possible as the original conditions. Our suggested science skill for practice FRQ 5.9 today is to propose a solution. So let's take this scenario here. An abandoned coal mine site has been found to have very high sulfur levels in the tailings and overburden left at the site. So describe one environmental impact of the high sulfur content found in the overburdened tailings and propose a solution to remedy or reduce this impact. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in today. Don't forget to like this video if it was helpful, subscribe for future APES video updates, and check out other notes over here to the side. And as always, think like a mountain, write like a scholar.